Seiyu units were once a pretty big thing for Seiyu themselves. Not anymore, as you can see by the sales numbers of those Seiyu units still active in the industry that struggled to break the barrier of 1000 copies sold. But how did these come to be? What made those a welcomed trend? Which were and are the best Seiyu units and why are those fading away in front of our eyes? It's time to dive deeper and deeper into what was once one of the primary ways for Seiyu with hopes of breaking into the music industry to get some exposure and showcase their skills. Let's kick off this episode of Seiyu Lounge. <laughs> Welcome to Seiyu Lounge, I am your host Vanessa and today's topic is Seiyu Units. The trend, the best and the slow fade. I believe I've mentioned a couple of times, especially in the first episodes of Seiyu Lounge, that Seiyu Units are at the core of why we now have bands, solo artists and, in a way, 2D music. People realized that Seiyu could sing well, that there were more talents to Seiyu, masters at using their voice than what people knew until then. That opened the doors for Seiyu units to become a thing, for Seiyu to have solo careers and people actually be interested in checking their stuff or even launching their bands with people outside of the Seiyu industry or even within it. While not viewed with much excitement nowadays, Seiyu units were important to shaping the music industry for Seiyu and are still a good introductory way to let people know of the talents that rookie or underrated Seiyu have. So in these and the next couple of episodes, we're going to go on a trip down the history of Seiyu units. What is considered a Seiyu unit? Any and every musical group that is comprised of only voice actors. They can be organized as bands, duos, full-on pop groups with positions assigned to them, you name it. As long as voice actors team up together to perform, they are in a Seiyu unit. To make things clear, Gran Rodeo is not a Seiyu unit because only one of the members is a Seiyu. You make is a band and simultaneously a Seiyu unit. Now you must be asking, how many Seiyu units are there? It is difficult to give you a rock solid number, but as I was going through my database, I caught at least 35. This number includes Seiyu units since 1995, and I quite possibly still don't know about every single one that existed or that exists. So you have that number, 35. It's quite a lot of Seiyu units. And there are more being added almost every year. Just to give you an idea, you have YMU, Weisskreutz, R16, j Addict, Connect, You Like It Around Zero, Two Heart, Kamu, D80 or Trado, You Make, Sparklu, Trignal and many more. Is there any variety in the music genres those Seiyu units end up exploring? Well, there is always that oddball or two that love to do their own thing and don't worry about following trends. The wide majority of Seiyu units in one way or another was and is following the trend which is electronic pop music. Pop is always a safe choice. It's the music genre that most people enjoy since it's not that complex nor aggressive and features catchy hooks all the time. It is music that grabs the attention of the listener. Pop is a safe choice and you have multiple groups that actually ended up fully embracing it for their sound. Examples include Trignal, Kamu and Sparklu. Dance music is also a thing and it is usually paired up with hip-hop or pop music to give it an even catchier vibe. Although it's not that common nowadays among Seiyu units, it was units like the AT and now M4 that have embraced that music genre. Rock has shifted quite a few times between being popular or not among Seiyu units. You like it around Zero were really big on their pop rock sound with some dramatic touches, and Kashkomi nowadays carries on with that legacy with a muscular rock sound that strays away from what can be considered 
easy listening to most people. Jazz is still a rarity among Seiyu units. The only Seiyu unit that actively explores that music genre is you make, and still, you can't say that is their main music genre, because that would be pop rock. In the end, you can say that pop is the music genre you will find Seiyu units exploring most frequently. Why do Seiyu debut as part of a Seiyu unit? Let's approach this question like this. Before 2012, Seiyu debuted as part of a Seiyu unit, just to complement the media outlet they were both in. For example, a drama CD, an anime series, or a radio show. Even the successful experiences by EMU and Vice Kreutz weren't enough to serve as a motivation to go all in and try to become a popular Seiyu unit. You can say that the ambition behind the Seiyu, basically joining those Seiyu units, was solely making the days of their fans, nothing more. Now the Seiyu that join Seiyu units do so in hopes of getting a call to make a solo debut, or of basically having more exposure, especially now that the Seiyu industry is oversaturated with thousands and thousands of new talents joining every year. The focus has shifted from rewarding their fans to trying to become the next big Seiyu artist. A reality check, because few have been the Seiyu that were part of Seiyu units before making a solo debut. One thing you can say is common to prior the popularity boom of Seiyu artists and to the music, and after it, is that joining Seiyu units is usually a good way to get some exposure for those Seiyu in question. For more talk on the reasons why Seiyu want to join the music industry, even if they have no passion for singing or performing, I welcome you to check episodes 46, 47 and 50 of Seiyu Lounge. The Pioneers It is safe to say that by now, if you have been listening to the episodes of Seiyu Lounge, that you know that it all started with EMU. They opened the doors to what would end up becoming a trend in the Seiyu industry. The Seiyu unit, consisting of Hikaru Midorikawa, Nobuto Shikana, Ryotaru Okiayu, Hideo Ishikawa and Daisuke Sakaguchi, debuted in 1995 and little did they know that they'd last five years while being incredibly popular, selling out live venues but also becoming the precursors to what would be a trend in the noughties and early tens. It wasn't until 1995 with EMU's debut that people were paying much attention to Male Seiyu. EMU is, undoubtedly, the precursor to all Seiyu units and bands. But they are never given credit for the path they trailed and for the opportunities that their shot in the dark, a successful one, gave to Male Seiyu in the following decades. They were pioneers. Then, in 1998, Weisskreutz made its debut. For those that don't know, Weisskreutz consisted of Shinichiro Miki, Tomokazu Seki, Takihito Koyaso and Yuki Hiro. Weisskreutz was the first ever 2.5D unit, which is to say, a group stemming from anime with Seiyu performing on stage as the characters that were, in this case, modeled after their Seiyu. This is a pretty unique thing as well. Contrary to EMU, their sound was more intense and aggressive, and their image definitely rougher. They were basically the bad boy version of EMU, which was, at that time, pretty refreshing. They ended up releasing multiple singles, selling out live venues, and turning into the idols of many teenagers in the late 90s, early noughties, until their disbandment in 2003. And while most fans of Seiyu music nowadays may not even know about these two Seiyu units, there's no denying it. Without them and the success they experienced, today we might not even have Seiyu units. Perhaps becoming a solo artist or joining or founding a band would not be a thing and public opinion of Seiyu as singers would still be the same as it was in the 90s. That Seiyu don't know how to sing. Because people wouldn't bother to check. After all, Seiyu were meant to do voice acting only. Or so was what they thought, and may as well be still thinking if only those two groups 
hadn't managed to impress. These two Seiyu units paved the way for others to join the music industry and, in a way, be taken seriously. And for that, everyone has to thank Yemu and Weisskreutz. Radio shows as the catalyst for Seiyu units. If you notice, the wide majority of Seiyu units that have debuted since 1995 are connected to a radio show. Just look at You Make, Mazuki Stigono Band, You Like It Around Zero, Kashkomi, DAT, or Trado, Hyoro Todanshi, Sparklu, Glass Slipper, and Max Boys. All these Seiyu units stem or stemmed from radio shows. Radio shows are, as I mentioned on episode 8, a great way for Seiyu to showcase their talents. Then comes a time that the show's producers want something else from the show. Perhaps a theme song. That's when the Seiyu that hosts said radio show team up and perform the opening and ending themes for it. And thus, a Seiyu unit is born. Seiyu units stemming from radio shows have one issue. If the radio show ends, so does the unit. So far I haven't encountered a Seiyu unit stemming from a radio show that has continued to release music past the radio show's end. And no, Trado does not fit this description, as their activities past being DAT are also tied to a radio show. But there's also advantages to Seiyu units being tied to radio shows. First off, the free promo of their songs on the show. Also, it's a great way to showcase the talents of Seiyu that, otherwise, you'd never get a chance to hear them sing. At the same time, in a way, it opens the door to music labels and music producers to get to know the singing skills that Seiyu have and, who knows, maybe give them a chance to make a solo debut later on. The Trend Although Seiyu units exist since 1995 by the hand of EMU and later on Vice Kreutz in 1998, the trend was noticeable from around 2006 up until 2012. There is a before and after 2010, though, so we need to have that into attention. From 2006 to 2010, there weren't many Seiyu units around and their sound was rather different between them. You had rock, pop, R&B, ballads. Seiyu units during that time specialized themselves in music genres instead of doing everything. Better yet, they were not following trends. Most people will find the sound from Seiyu units debuted from 2006 to 2010 to be generic, fairly simple, or not that exciting. That was the point, Seiyu performing music that suited a concept, either of the radio show or of the unit itself, not to try to become the next J-pop idol group. But from 2010 to 2012, after the explosion of popularity that the Uta Pri franchise got, especially its main unit, Stadish, somehow there was a boom of Seiyu units, most, if not all, trying to cash in on the newfound love for Seiyu units by anime and Seiyu fans, even if those had nothing to do with anime. After all, Starish's popularity provided the big break for the Seiyu industry and Seiyu as a whole to try to venture into the music industry. Now, people were listening. They were curious, even interested in listening to Seiyu singing. Almost all units from this time were big on their bubbly pop sound, going for the type of sonority that had caught the attention of anime fans with Utapri. At that time, there was no way to say that just because people liked Uta Pri, they'd instantly like any Seiyu unit out there. After all, Seiyu units do not have anime characters, a story or a lore connected to them. They were insanely different from what Starish was at that time. Yet, somehow, Seiyu units managed to catch a little bit of heat from Seiyu and anime fans. And this was absolutely awesome. That popularity took Seiyu units from only occasionally releasing CDs to even kicking off their own live tours and live shows. They started selling their merchandise. 
Say you units started to have fans, people genuinely in love with their music, regardless of whether they followed the Seiyu's careers in voice acting or not. Seiyu units were at their peak popularity from 2006 to 2012. That six year span counts with the most exciting and groundbreaking Seiyu units I can think of. Cell Division brought R&B with a bit of rap to the spotlight back in 2006. It would take over a decade before both music genres would end up being a trend in Seiyu music projects or even among solo artists. He like it Around Zero was sort of a pioneer in its blend of rock, pop, with theatricality in its music. The Seiyu unit made its debut in 2010. Trignal, which currently is the most successful Seiyu unit active in the industry, made its debut in 2012 and has managed to keep up with the trends even if it has evolved with the sound and vibe going the mature route. Before hip-hop was a trend in Japan and especially before it became a trend for Seiyu artists, 2D groups and Seiyu units, DAT was already doing it with a really high level of quality back in 2012. There was a lot of quality in the second and third generations of Seiyu units. Those were the ones that ended up paving the way for the Seiyu units that we now have. Every group that appears after these units has tried to emulate their sound, tweaked it a little bit to fit in with trends but was met with a different reaction that I will talk about in a couple of minutes and in the following episodes. The best. If I have to talk about the best Seiyu units, taking into account the quality of their vocals and music, I have to mention Trignal, DAT or Trado, Kashkomi, Sparklu and You Make. Why do I mention these as the best? They have, in a way, been trendsetters or perfected the Seiyu unit formula that EMU and Weisskreutz created. Trignal, Seiyu unit consisting of Ryohei Kimura, Tsubasa Yonaga and Takuya Gucci, is one of the very few Seiyu units that is almost a decade old and is still active. Actually, is in a hiatus in the past couple of years, but for all purposes, they are active. They may have started with a really upbeat bubblegum pop sound, but with time, they managed to improve their sound, to the point that they even have a say in some of their songs. They have kept their pop sound, however, at the same time, improved it to fit in with a more mature audience and to showcase a more or a matured group. DAT, Seiyu unit consisting of Daisuke Ono and Takayuki Kondo, might no longer be around, but they were rather impressive when they were active. Their sound was intense, with upbeat, exciting EDM leading the way and their mix of rap and clean singing had a really cool dynamic. The unit made its return in 2021 as Trado, and their sound changed with their name change. They now are the only Seiyu unit with a K-pop inspired sound. Kashkomi Seiyu unit consisting of Shoya Chiba and Shonogami doesn't get the love it deserves, but this is a fine Seiyu unit. One you can genuinely take its music out of context and show it to a non-fan of Seiyu and they'll enjoy it. Their rock sound is muscular, aggressive, overflowing with energy and their performances are on an insanely high level and with a lot of technique. Something that shows that, yes, Seiyu units can be bloody awesome and rock the stage if they want to. Sparklu unit consisting of Yutu Uemura, Shun Horie, Yuye Ozumi, Takto Yoshinaga and formerly Shoya Chiba may have started on a bubbly tone with a generic pop sound and did not attract many people, but over the years they've grown as performers, working like a well-oiled machine. In 2021, their complete change in concept and tone made them rise in popularity and finally attract a lot of people to their music, even those that do not know what Seiyu are. 
Their sound now is mature, their vibe masculine and elegant. Their performances as a group and individually are outstanding, with Trignal being inactive as of late and Kashkomi not being popular, Sparklu is the biggest Seiyuu unit currently active in the Seiyuu and music industries. Yumeik is a self-produced pop-rock duo consisting of Kent Ito and Yoshiki Nakajima. While they started their activities in a subdued way by performing songs for their radio show, the duo decided to make an official debut back in 2017. Since then, Yumeik has shown that Seiyuu units stemming from radio shows can have a high production value through the music they produce and the songs they write lyrics for. They showed that Seiyuu can be in charge of almost everything in their creative process, and their vocals currently the best among all Seiyuu units. The Slow Fade Despite the increase in the quality of the music released by Seiyuu units since 2017, it's safe to say that joining one is not that appealing as Seiyuu units sell poorly. I believe that from 2014 to 2017, there was a weird period in which it seemed like Seiyuu units and the Seiyuu themselves didn't really know where to go from, what to do next. It was almost as if creativity had stagnated and there was no specific reason for such stagnation, especially given how there were so many music genres to explore and concepts to embrace. There were still Seiyuu units making their debut during this time, namely Uncle Bomb and Masochistic Ono Band, but not as many as you'd expect following a popularity boom across the Seiyuu industry. It was definitely odd. Then, starting from 2017, a new boom took place, this time a solo debut boom. And I believe that this was what silently made the Seiyuu units fade away. All of a sudden, all the rising stars among male Seiyuu were making solo debuts. Even Seiyuu, with barely any work in anime, thus barely known to the general public, were debuting as solo artists. Most debuts were with big budgets, a lot of exposure and opportunities to take a jump to other fields within the entertainment industry. This was, and still is, something that music labels representing Seiyuu units can't provide. Music labels not putting much of an effort into making them being known, the low quality of the music and quite possibly the low pay have steered Seiyuu from joining Seiyuu units into becoming solo artists. Seiyuu units took a backseat and even with the debuts of Sparklu, Yumeik and Kashkomi, three Seiyuu units with high quality music and a much more professional vibe right off the bat in comparison with those debuted in the early 10s, those were not enough to breed new life and attract attention to Seiyuu units. So you were now with their eyes set on following the big trend of taking a shot at becoming solo artists to experience the popularity that many other Seiyuu have gotten since then. And that's how Seiyuu units now are few and the ones that have survived the test of time are a niche within the music industry. Although Seiyuu have been singing as solo artists since the 80s, it was only in the 90s that we'd get the very first Seiyuu units. In the 90s, the music industry was a lot different from what it now is. Music releases were not frequent, the quality of the recordings was weird at times, sometimes a bit too homemade, even in comparison with indie artists and most Seiyuu weren't that interested in showcasing awesome, jaw-dropping vocals because there were no high expectations back then. Things were simpler, I'll give you that. Over the years and since 2000, Seiyuu units have been a constant and were, for some time, even a trend. However, not all survived the test of time, others ended up disbanding while others never managed to be successful to begin with. 
and now, in the 20s, seiyu units are not really a trend at all. They've turned into a niche. Seiyu have moved on to other, more exciting projects, putting aside the lack of creative freedom that comes with being in a seiyu unit, as well as the lack of publicity associated with such acts. Getting a solo debut is now relatively easy, as I mentioned in episodes 46, 47 and 50. All Seiyu really need right now is being good-looking, and regardless if they have a talent or passion for singing, they end up making a solo debut, whereas before, they'd join a Seiyu unit while the most popular or best singers within those groups would be awarded solo debuts. So things have definitely changed in the music industry for Seiyu. As such, Seiyu units are no longer both a prime choice when it comes to Seiyu wanting to get exposure for their singing skills, but also as a way for music labels to find new talents. So tell me, do you think Seiyu units are a good way to promote Seiyu? Is there a Seiyu unit you're a fan of? If yes, do let me know in the comments on YouTube. If you enjoyed this episode and don't want to miss the Hand That Feeds HQ's weekly Mail CU and music-related content, hit the subscribe button. I'll return next week with another episode of CU Lounge. Thank you for listening and see you guys around.